mind if you decide to ask me a question and turn on your mic which you're more than welcome to do so that will be recorded and also if you decide to switch on your camera that will be recorded and this video will end up on the turn on youtube channel which is publicly available so just to make you aware of that before you decide to switch on your mic if not please do leave me questions in the conversation we've got the meeting conversation live at the moment i will come back and pick those up as we progress through the session and you're more than welcome to ask me anything you about one note class notebook i'll do my best to answer so today is what's called a fuel the classroom session and in the fuel the classroom session we will look at all versions of one note class notebook but before we do i'm going to direct you to where you can find a lot of the support materials that we are going to cover today and rather than giving you an additional resource to download we have used the microsoft education center the Microsoft Education Center is a amazing resource. It's got lots of different courses on it, and those can make up learning pathways if you wish. If you've got an account already, uh, it'd be worth signing in. You've got the landing page in the screenshot now at the moment. The sign in button is in the top right hand corner. If not, please log in using the account that you've got for your school, college, and you'll be able to then redeem a code later in this session, which will give you the equivalent of 1000 points, which are the two OneNote courses we're going to cover today. And it will make you a certified Microsoft Innovative Educator. And then that will start you on your way to collecting other courses. You'll get badges in the Microsoft Education Center. And if you're really, really interested, you think actually this is really good for my professional development, you can then apply before July the 15th this year to become a Microsoft Innovative Educator Expert. And that's demonstrating that you're using lots of different Microsoft products and how you're using that to transform learning in your own practice, but also possibly across the school. And that can lead on to many other things including being an NMIEE trainer, working with other schools or working with Microsoft itself. As I said, we'll give you the code for that later on today, uh, but we will have a look now at OneNote itself. So we'll look at learning resources and how we can create those. Some of those we have said we have been polishing during lockdown because you may have been using OneNote. If you haven't, it doesn't matter. We'll cover how to get started in today's session as well. We'll have a look at the, the content you can get in there. It's much more than just some text on a page. And I'll show you a few of the key tools to be able to get in and start using that straight away. And then we'll also discuss how easy it is to share uh, and make that resource available to either colleagues or also to pupils and students you might be teaching. There's one key thing to say early on, and that is that OneNote class notebook or OneNote if you are dealing with a non-class team is perfect to pair up with teams and it works really nicely inside of it but it also on its own is an extremely powerful tool for me when i was looking for tools and i was teaching full-time one note class notebook stood out there is something that microsoft had on its own that had so many unique possibilities and it really gave me a foot up in the classroom and made a few of my colleagues that i was working with actually interested in how on earth i was doing it the OneNote class notebook with the teaching and learning features, if you're going to create one in Teams, is only available in what's called a class team, and that's the team that you would use with pupils and students and staff. All of the other types of teams that you create will just have OneNote, and it just misses out the learning tools aspect, but all the other features in OneNote are there. If you're going to set up OneNote for the first time, a few questions that I've had in previous sessions of how easy is it to do, I can show you that today uh, about getting one set up. But you could also use what's called a data sync tool. So Microsoft has school data sync and that can link up with your MIS system and that can bring in all of the staff and students that correspond with a class or a set. And it takes away some of that administration that you might have to do. As far as what OneNote Class Notebook can do for you, it allows you to have many different functions, whether it's just organizing your own personal notes or your planning, or as I said earlier about getting resources for supporting learning into one place and making them easily accessible from anywhere for the students, but also for the staff. So without any further delay, let's nip over and have a look at OneNote Class Notebook itself. The actual software has got many different versions. Today, we will use OneNote in a tab in the web browser, but we will also use it as OneNote that's built into Windows 10. 
There are additionally other versions available and you may have one installed on your computer. So you can get OneNote for Office 2016, Office 2019, or what's called Desktop Office 365. They are the ones that install on your computer. Just for ease of use, I would advise you not to use one of those that come with the Office Suite, but to use the one that's in Windows 10 or the one that's uh, available into Windows, uh, so it built into the web app version. The web app version can be found by logging into www.office.com, click the app launcher, and then over there is OneNote, and it will take you to the corresponding version, and OneNote Class Notebook will be if you're using it for a teaching and learning focus. Once that opens up, it can either be here discreetly as an app on its own, or if you're using it inside of a team, it will sit quite nicely as the tab at the top there. And that's the, what we call the Wii space because everyone in a team can use the functions here. There's class notebook at the top. It's exactly the same thing. You're just looking at it through a different window, so to speak. If you want more space, you probably use the tabbed version. And this is a tab in my web browser here. If you are using it from within a team, it doesn't have to stay cramped like this. As soon as you click on the page itself, it will automatically make a bit more space. You can expand that further still. So it will come out and have the whole width of the page. And then it's virtually the size it was for using the dedicated app. Most of the functions that you're going to need are all in the online version. There's occasionally the odd thing that you can do in desktop version, and we'll look at one of those uh, today uh, that you can achieve in the desktop version, the Windows 10 version that you can't do in the online version. The direction of travel is that it will become one unified version at some point in the future. It's not exactly sure when that's going to happen, but that will remove the headache of trying to think which version you're going to use. When you come into a OneNote class notebook for the first time, you will be given a landing page there. And then just to give you some orientation of what it looks like, if I expand that out, you've got sections here and you've then got pages that go within those sections. The best analogy I can give you for beginning to understand how OneNote class notebook or OneNote is structured. If you think of the OneNote as a lever arch folder or a ring binder folder, Inside of there, you would have had paper dividers uh, with little tabs that stick out at the end. And then on those dividers, you may have written what was going to be in each section of your file. Then you would file pieces of A4 paper inside of those sections. So the pages are like the pieces of A4 paper, and they can be absolutely anything. They could have been lined, they could have been squared, graph. You might hole punch a photocopied sheet. Well, the same thing applies with a OneNote or a OneNote class notebook. You have these pages. They are a blank, endless canvas of paper, and you can add on to them exactly whatever you wish. And then you file them in the corresponding section to make it easy to find them. When you create a OneNote or a OneNote class notebook, you'll get certain sections. Now, if it is a OneNote class notebook, which is what we're mainly going to focus on today, you get three sections given to you. The first section is a collaboration space. And if I expand that, I think I've already got a few sections in there. So I'm in a fictional secondary setting here where I'm a science teacher. The collaboration space is a section where you can store resources. And again, I've subdivided it by further sections here by areas of science, where in those sections, you can have your pages. And in a collaboration space, students and staff can both edit the content on the pages in there. Now, it's entirely up to you. And sometimes there's a very good reason for that. You might be conducting a science inquiry in the context of the subject we're looking at. Uh, and actually, you want everybody in the group to be scribbling either by inking directly onto the page with their stylus or typing onto it to be capturing all their results in one place so you can have a whole class discussion about it. It might be that you don't want everybody working on the one page and what you actually wish to happen is to have separate pages. So this might be uh, group one. And then I'm going to add another page down here and this is group two. But because we're in the collaboration space, 
all of the students can flick between the different pages and they can view what's being captured. You do need to discuss about being respectful of people's work, not overwriting and deleting it or not stealing what the other person's uh, got there. But it's a good way to allow easy collaboration for you as a teacher to manage what's being there and also view it without having to worry about going into individual areas as it would have been on a server or looking in individual students' OneDrives it's all there you can get to it at any point during the lesson after the lesson you can prepare it you could drop something in here ahead of the lesson the night before and it would just be ready to go on the day the other area that you're going to get in one note class notebook is the content library the content library is a little more restricted for students so again in here i've decided to create some uh, sections my sections i decided to divide up in the same way so if i went back to the biology one there i've created a page on onion cells now that might be that we're going to have a lesson where we're going to take an onion we're going to mount the onion cells slides on a slide pop under a microscope stain them and draw what you're going to see and i've just created a very quick page in one note that says look this is what you could expect to see here are the onion cells nucleus and cell walls and so forth that's all on the page and then they could look at it but unlike the collaboration space the students can't overwrite the original copy that's in the content library they can take a copy of it and they can do what they wish with it afterwards and you might even encourage them to do so if this was secondary and even upper key stage two in primary they can really easily right click and go to move or copy they wouldn't have the move option. I get moved because I'm in here as a teacher. But what they would be able to do is take a copy. So if I was Ella, I would open up my folder. And in here, I find my biology section. And then in my biology section, I press copy. And it would copy a page across. A bit like lifting a photocopy sheet off a pile, where it went over to Ella. And then she could carry on. And maybe she could insert a picture of what she got underneath there, or write up what she found. Uh, however you want them to use and engage that sheet so you can pre-prepare a resource and they can easily pick it up now that was quite key during lockdown but i firmly believe that one of the one of the plus points of one note class notebook is that it was very useful when we didn't have students and pupils with us but it's still extremely useful now because unlike them having books or having pieces of paper however they're organizing their daily learning resources if it's all bundled here together they've always got it in one place you can always go and check the work they're doing they can access it wherever they are on pretty much any device because one note class notebook could be an app on a tablet or a mobile phone and i fully accept that's a bit fiddly but if you're just viewing something sometimes it will suffice but it installs on on windows computers it will work on apple mac and it will even now on chromebooks as well so you've got a lot of scope about the number of devices that you can access the content in I understand that school devices are limited and you may not have the luxury of being able to get students into using OneNote class notebook every time. But one of the things that I found myself doing, I stopped using dedicated board software and there's lots of products out there. They're quite expensive and they go with the brand of board that you've got in school, uh, various notebook products. Uh, and those also gave me a headache because if I happened to move to another school and they had a different type of board software, I'd end up having to recreate the wheel and make my resources again. So I may have been using some power points but actually i found having it in one note class note but means everything was organized by subject or by unit or by topic that i was teaching and i could just lift the pages and bring them back into my next office 365 account in my next school so the transferability cut down on my workload of having to recreate everything i did if I did go to another school or if I was working in an outreach capacity, maybe I was working with the primary schools and it was in the summer term and we would have some transition, pupils were coming up, uh, I could easily get that across them because I could share that link digitally. So using it as a teaching aid and using it instead of the board software is something that I have continued doing. And I, speaking to a lot of teachers, they've continued doing because they've they found they quite like this and it's got a lot of tools that they were looking for and then it gives you that transferability and availability that you might not have had if it was a individual page and a specific piece of software that's hard to get it out to pupils and students and you might have to save it as another format or convert it somehow but here it's just there 
Beyond the content library, I'm logged in here today as a teacher, you will have a teachers only area and in the teachers only area, you can prepare resources privately without students being able to get to them. So if I was making a sheet in here, it might be that I've got some work here about plant and animal cells and we've got a year seven unit we're doing. So I can make both those pages here in private and I decide when I want to share them with the students or the pupils. I may decide to move them to the content library. I may also decide to move it to the collaboration space because I want everybody to work on it together. But at the same time, it might be that I don't want it to be out there at all. And I'm just going to keep it in my teachers only section to deliver the actual lesson. So this may be where all of the content for the delivery of my lesson is going to live. And all I do is I, I open up OneNote class notebook on my board. It could be over here in the dedicated app. And away I go. I've got it on screen uh, and it's ready to use. So it's personal preferences to which way you want to go with it. But you've got lots of scope then about how you can use the software and what's here now building the pages as i said at the beginning doesn't have to be really boring text there's lots of ways to make everything more interesting and interactive and you can already see here i've got animations on the page now when you're building a page and let's start a new one from blank so if i go to biology in my teachers only and add a new page in here we might start something about blood cells and then on the blood cells, I could type, um, they can be found, found in the human body, and so forth. And I could I could type away to my heart's content, uh, and that would be great. And But it doesn't make for really engaging content. You want to make it more interesting than that. So you can, using the draw tools that are here in OneNote Class Notebook, you can ink in. Now, there's different levels of drawing tools depending on which product you are using. Uh, and some of the online tools are more restricted than the full version that's in Windows 10. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you across. I'm going to show you what this looks like now in the version of Windows 10 because we've seen the web version quite a bit. Uh, and there's some more options, as I said, that are in the Windows 10 version that aren't in the web version. While I'm swapping over, are there any questions so far about what we've covered about creating in the structure of the OneNote class notebook? Nope. If there is, feel free to ask away. I'll uh, come back and check on those again in a little bit. So if I go to my teachers only section, uh, my biology, in comes my blood cells page. The great thing about also using the OneNote class notebook is everything is synced through your OneDrive in the cloud. So this is all personal and private to you unless you wish to share that OneNote. But at the same time, I could stop on one device, go and pick up on another device, and everything I've been doing is there. And exactly as I left it, I haven't got to worry about saving another version or opening it up on a, on a different drive is just syncing. You see here the drawing tools here have considerably more options than the one in the in the web version. So I might decide, well, I'd like to ink on here, but what I'd like to do first of all is just get a picture. So I can go to the insert pictures. I'm going to go online. I'm going to try and find a version of blood cell. Now, if you've got students using this or pupils, they can go and find media content without having to leave the comfort of OneNote Class Notebook and also without the temptation of distraction where you are going to potentially find them and uh, looking at other things or investigating something they shouldn't. So they're staying in the one place. So we got that there. Now I might want to go back to my draw tool. And when I've got them with me in the lesson, I'm going to pick up a pen. Let's try that one. Uh, and what I might want to do is say, well, we've got here a concave design so i might do that and then i go back and add some uh, text on the side or i could carry on inking along so it might be it's got a concave design uh, and that is to pick up oxygen that on i could continue but what you can quickly do is label it up now there's the other plus point with having the draw tools is that when pupils or students have completed any work in OneNote class notebook, you can go in and you could annotate it as part of the marking. So if this was in Ella's or Fatima's or Rosie's work, 
you can go in and you can have a look in their corresponding section. If they've taken a copy, and it might be they've taken a copy of the lesson that I gave them there, that I can then check what they've done on the resources that I had prepared, uh, and I can then ink over the top using the drawing tools so that my feedback can go straight onto their page. And I can get to it because I can access all of the different sections and everyone's student in my OneNote class notebook has a section and then they've got the subsections which divide up into the areas that I'm looking at in my subject but if they need to access this maybe from home because you've set them an associated homework maybe in assignments in teams or through another platform they could just log in on their office 365 and in the web version they can go back and check what they did in the lesson in the daytime and it hasn't i haven't got a scenario where maybe they did record all of that in a book but i've taken that set of books in for marking so for two days out of the five days they've got their homework set they haven't got the book they need to refer to well they could refer to it here just because i've been teaching with this even though Though they may not have been actually using this themselves. If I want to get one of these resources out, so if I nip back over to the biology, if I wanted to send out the blood cells and ask my students I'm working with to to add their own one, I can distribute this. If I go to class notebook uh, and I go to the option distribute page, and then I think what I'll do is I will go group distribution. Now over here, you'll get an option to send a copy, a bit like taking a photocopy of this page out to different groups. Now you could use this for a whole class or you could use this for an intervention. So if I create a new group, I'm gonna call my first group whole class. And I'm gonna tick all of the students in my class. And I'm only going to have to do this once because this group will be available in the future again. Press save and at any point I can go back in, re-edit the name of that group. I could also edit and change who's in that group. Now I've got my whole class group, but it might be I've got my uh, science extension group. And in there I'm going to have three girls. Press save. Uh, and now I've got two groups I can quickly distribute to. So if I wanted to send it to just my science extension group, I tick science extension group, click next. I'd like that to go into the folder, the biology folder of my science extension group and I press distribute. And then either during the lesson or before the lesson, what one note class notebook will get doing is sending out a digital copy of that. There you go. In real time, that's 100 percent complete. It doesn't really matter whether you're doing 50, 150, the time doesn't really change. And then you could go to Ella and in Ella's biology, you will then have the blood cells page that we've just sent across. And in here, I could use the marking up uh, method. I could add another text box for feedback. That's all well and good. But what I could do is I could insert, insert some audio. And that thing is that is a amazing opportunity for you to say well done Ella it's great you've managed to capture exactly how red blood cells function and why they're really important to the body would you be able to take that one step further and explain how white blood cells also fit in uh, and what their function is as well and then I stop my recording and then when my students come back it might be that they, they've got a literacy need, which means reading a lot of text on the page doesn't work for them. Well, all they need to do now is to press play on the audio clip. And when you press play on the audio clip, it will play my voice back to them and they can pick up their feedback directly from there. It also makes my marking far quicker because what I haven't got to worry about doing is going in and writing something on every page. I really found that was a game changer when I first adopted OneNote class notebook that I could just quickly leave some audio feedback, individualized, differentiated for all of my class, but it took me a fraction of the time to do my marking. If I needed to evidence that for Ofsted, well then fine, Ofsted could have a look at one of the pages in my OneNote class notebook, but there was evidence there of marking, formative feedback, uh, and then making sure that the students had a chance to act upon that to demonstrate progress in learning. All of those things could be achieved from within here, starting to use some of the tools in the OneNote class notebook. Now I said, that there was also some features that were in here that aren't in the online version the drawing tools are a good example they're expanded if you press the plus you can add even more pens in there but if you went to 
uh, if you went to view, one of the other things that you can do on the online version, you can change the page color. So you might need to change the background because you'd like it to be a, a suitable color if I was visually impaired, for instance. Not sure how well that's showing up. I've got a pale green background now. Uh, I know sometimes that doesn't. Let me try and inc increase the contrast on that one. Uh, you can choose more colors in the downloaded version, the one on your Windows 10 compared to the one that's online. So if, let me pick a darker background. There we go. That shows up better. So I've got a green background now and I might need that because I've got a visually impaired pupil I'm working with, but also at the same time might want to have a different background there too. So it might be that I'm looking for some lines because it helps them structure their writing. So in there I've got line content. One of the things that's not available in the online version is, is lines. Uh, and as I said, when the unified version comes up, that will help. But in the moment, there are certain things that you can do on the on the desktop version you can't do on the online version, or they've got a few more options available to you on the desktop version rather than the online version. Any questions on the Windows 10 version versus working online or anything I've just shown you regarding some of the tools that are there? See somebody's just typing a question in. While we do that, I'm just going to knit back across to another section, come out of Ella's and go back to my teachers only section. OK, thank you for confirming. We will knit back into my teacher section and we will pick up not the blood cells page, but we'll look at maybe how you can lay out the content. So I've chosen a, a pale cream background here uh, and I've created what will end up being a sequence of lessons. So this is imagining we're getting year seven in. We're doing our first one of our first science units with them and we're looking at cells. So the cells itself, you can scroll across, you can work your way through it and you can work it progression in learning within lesson and that can then build up with progression over a, a week or so so i'll swap back over to the online version for you the the learning itself is something then that if you say by lesson three do you know what can you go back and check it you don't have to be the person doing that for them they can go scroll across the page and view what you did earlier in the topic or earlier in the week if you're working in a primary school uh, and they can then use that to uh, have that eureka moment and go oh yeah they did tell us that or mr long did explain that uh, so you've got the option to get them to be independent in checking prior learning rather than you having to do everything for them at the same time so in here <clears throat> i've built a in, in fact it's a, it's a front sheet so i scroll down down here i've got depending on level of challenge what i expect them to be able to achieve and also what i will expect from them during the topic then scrolling across the page so there's an arrow it's going to tell them to move across one of the first things we're going to look at our sections in the cell and to bring that to life a bit more have a little bit of fun with it we've got some animations talking about cytoplasms and chloroplasts and we've just used that content online obviously you need to be aware of copyright but many subscribed platforms now have content that you can use because your school is subscribing to that and then during lesson one we're going to have a look at functions in a a plant cell versus an animal cell and we're going to tick the different sections there and what those sections actually do in which type of cell they exist in and i've got some tick boxes in there if you wanted to insert a tick box <clears throat> it's quite easy to do you can add them in underneath uh, and they will just become available to you so if i pick up the I think under home from rightly there we go tags here i've got my tick boxes so if i decided to add another section in so it might be list here and underneath there i might go to my tags so this is another great tool you could use this for checklists your to-do lists instead of posting notes uh, sometimes students use revision lists you put in tick boxes and it might be and then plant cell and it might be animal cell and so forth just like we're looking at the sections in it and then once it's in there 
students can keep adding to it, but also they can tick it off or tick for in the instance of which sections are in each one here. So it's a quick, quick way of doing that. But underneath, you might get them to write a description of one of the above. And then that's in their version, not necessarily in my original version and teachers only section, because I might have sent them a copy of this like you just witnessed in Ella's area. So we've gone through that. And then at the end of the lesson, what I want to do is check how secure that learning is. So I've used Microsoft Forms here and I've built myself a quick little multiple choice test based around that. And then they submit that in at the end. So for me, I've then got data, hard data in Microsoft Forms that will allow me to evidence to someone else in my department. If I'm working in science and secondary, if I'm working in uh, in primary, it might be that I've got a maths coordinator or an English coordinator. I can say, oh, look, as well as the books, here's what they answered in the form. And then that's marked itself for me because it's going to submit and self mark once I've built the form. Yes, there is a bit of work in the form, but at the same time, once you've invested that, it will be fine. And then there's a pause because for me, in that sequence that we just scrolled across, that's lesson one finished. But then I could continue through and I could bring in lesson two and then lesson two, we carry on across. So it might be that we're going to have a look here, tying in with that homework sheet that I was going to ha hand out. We might look here at red blood cells and then once you've got your text in there, it's got all of the formatting tools that you normally have. So I think we'll make that much bigger. And then you can go, as I said, using the insert tools, insert a picture. You can also insert a file. Now, if you do subscribe to some other sort of resource, what you can do is, for instance, insert a PDF and you will print the PDF onto the surface of the OneNote class notebook. And then you could answer the questions by putting in a text box underneath. So to save the workload and pressures on you as a teacher, instead of not using that because it's a PDF and it's really hard, for, for students to use it, print it onto the page of the OneNote class notebook and use it from there. It's also really easy then, even if they, if they do have an inking capability on the devices, they could just draw straight at the top and write on the gaps in the PDF that you've printed onto the page. If not, they just insert the text underneath, whichever way works for you. Now, you could insert pictures, but it's more interesting if you insert something that's animated. As you can see there, there's a red blood cell. So I might go insert pictures and I've had a little look around online and I've found my content. So you can search online, but I'm going to show you what it looks like from a file. I'm going to choose the file. So I'm going to go to my downloads. I'm going to select a file I've got there called red blood cells. I'm going to press insert and then without a lot of problem, it comes up in one of my boxes. I can move my box across. So then my discussion it then extends into the into the worksheet that I was going to distribute. Once that uploads and renders, which is having a long think about, it will then become an animation of the red blood cell. And off I go on the second lesson in this sequence of learning, which then goes from differences between plants and animal cells into specialisms and different specialist cells and how they help the human body. So there we go. There's the animation coming there. So you could also insert videos. Those can be videos that you've captured yourself. Maybe it's a video of you delivering something. It could be videos from YouTube. You can insert those in a very similar manner. So if you go insert link, that will put the YouTube video in. Go insert file. If you've got a separate file, that can go in there. And that's also where you can do your insert the printout of the file. Uh, I should have made that clear earlier. So insert printout of file is there. If you want to insert um, a file itself onto the page, you can insert an attached file, embed it onto the surface of the page. So that if you've got an associated PowerPoint presentation, Word document, maybe they're going to pop something into an Excel spreadsheet rather than use forms, you can have it on the surface of the OneNote so they can click it. If you're going to do that, the one thing that's absolutely key that you need to make sure is that they've got permission to access the original files. If you've got it in your private OneDrive, they'll get a message saying they don't have permission to access that file when they try clicking it. So it needs to be maybe in a shared area in Teams or SharePoint so that they've got permission to access the location where that file is stored. That is really important. You can pop it in the table. Uh, there's the audio tool I used earlier, or you might decide to use Microsoft Forms. So to complement my lesson, I'm going to have an end of unit assessment. 
here i've got a quick tick box to for them to indicate they've read revised and checked and then down here i've got a form that i've started building which has some questions in it about cells now, if i wanted to pop a form in and maybe i'll go back to the red blood cells one that we were using earlier and click on the page and let's pop it underneath there i go to forms which is cross link forms is an app in office 365 itself but you can get it here it will slide out from the side it might ask me to sign in looks like it's going to uh, let's just go through that okay and just let it load up forms itself will then slide out from the side and what you can do is you can build yourself a form whether it's a data collection form because you might be using it in the lesson to collect data for science or it might be that you are going to have a form for a quiz that one seems to be messing around on me i might just try the desktop version let's see if we can do that No, it doesn't like it on either. I think I must have something going on with my sign-ins today. It's not letting me sign through. What you would get is rather frustrating. You get a box in the slide out window and it says create new form. It will eventually link you through to forms itself. So if I just open up forms in a separate tab and then once you've got your form it will come up as a blank form or you can choose one that you prepared earlier so it might be my class cells test you open up your class cells test and then you can merrily build your form in here and you can choose the answers to your questions uh, to denote which one's correct and which one's not so in here i can indicate which one's the correct answer there isn't a library of these pre-made forms i would urge you to share them if you've done them and you know a colleague's going to need them but the great thing is once you've invested that time you can then use that in future years if you had something like key stage four and you're going to make an exam question uh, work inside of forms that's achievable as well so if you go to add new it might have got a text answer because it's a very open answer uh, and you could then go to here and you can go to image and you could either search or bring your own image in and it might be uh, let's see if one comes up aqa cells question and if it if it's available to you as a picture in one of your other subscribe platforms you can bring the picture into into forms itself and then by having an open text box underneath it will allow you for them to see the picture that's the question and have a go at answering them let's see if we can oh, there we go they've got one there let's add that in so the, the picture will come up there and then they can answer down here i might make that a long answer question because there's quite a bit to explain and when they're ready to go back in their one note they would then do this on the page of the one note but they go down and in there might be the you can mess around with the size of the, of the page and the image you're getting but you can have the page there it's the exam question from aq as it was they can pop that in there and it will submit it open questions you will need to check the text questions but if it's got a definitive order or answer you can pre-program that to be answered uh, and that could be embedded onto the page like we had over there with the with the other one and then they can just pick it up so cross-linking with other apps in office 365 is also really easy to achieve and makes it quite a rich experience rather than a simple boring page one of the final tools i'm going to show you today is quite useful in anything that has a number element to it so in here i've inked a calculation on the board uh, and then what I could do is I could go to my drawing tools and I've got something called the maths tool there. Now, the maths tool is really useful for starting to get your your content for number related work altogether. So I'm highlighting that there. I'm going to go to the maths tool. The maths tool will detect what I've written, 7 plus 5 minus 3. I could fix it or I can ink it onto the page if I want. But what I can get the maths tool to do for me is some of the work. Now, if I'm busy doing something else in the classroom, working with an intervention group, or you just want to promote independence and learning, you can use the tools that are in here to maybe round what the answer are, evaluate what the answer might be. So it's saying it's nine. Well, that's great, but how do we get there? Now, we I fully appreciate there's going to be lots of methods that you're going to need to teach. 
but you could say look show steps in calculation in here is things like immersive reader to read the text out to you but it shows you how you might want to get to that answer and then from that you can use the maths tool to generate another microsoft form based on the questions that you've got there it could give you another 10 or 15 questions based on that calculation and that generates for you on the fly during the lesson in the middle of using one note class notebook and it will be self-marking so you don't have to worry about going to market but the one thing you might do is add in a text box here saying if complete go and uh, go and try revising on i don't know maybe bbc bite size or an associated resource and from that you've also got another activity that they can be getting on with so you're not limited to what you can achieve so the one note class notebook itself has so many different versatile options in for you even if you've come in here and you've got your one note class notebook set up you can easily go back in and re-edit these so if you decided look I need for all my students to have another section in there. You can go into things like manage the notebook tools, which opens up another tab. Might ask me to sign in a minute. Uh, yep, let's sign in there. Go in again. And once you're in there into the manager notebook tools, what you could do is use the manager notebook tools. You can lock a collaboration space. So if the collaboration space needs to be open during a lesson, you can come in here and lock it so that post lesson, once you've done your hour with them or your two hours with them, if you've got a back to back session, you can lock the page and then even at night, they can't go in and mess around with the collaboration space. So you've got that sorted. If you wanted to add another section in for students, in addition to biology, chemistry, homework, it might be you wanted to add classwork. You click the add section button and then that will add that section in for all of your students instead of you having to go through and do it one by one. Or you might want to get a link to a particular notebook where you can copy the link from there and you might be able to pop it into the chat in Teams, for instance. So you could post it over into the team itself. So if we go back across uh, you can pop it in there as well so there's lots of scope for how you might want to share your OneNote class notebook it doesn't have to be limited to just using the OneNote class notebook on its own you can get it in other ways too are there any questions on the tools that I've covered or anything else before I go back over to the presentation I think you'd like to explore or you'd like me to explain in any different ways Nope. OK, I'm going to move back across to the uh, presentation itself and we will wrap up for today. Just swapping screens. I'll just skip down a few of the slides. So the resources that in the MEC that you're going to get accredited for today are available here. The Microsoft Education Center or the MEC has two really good courses. Depending on where you are, you might want to engage with the getting started with OneNote, which will also cover elements of OneNote class notebook. And then you can have a look at how as a teacher it can work for you in delivering learning resources, but also how it can make your life easier as a teacher and reduce workloads upon you. There is a, a OneNote class notebook directory and I can post the links for those after this session uh, into the chat so that you can go and pick them up. And all of those courses are available free and will reinforce what we've covered today. And it will make sure that it's really easy for you to get started. Or if you've got a particular area that you're interested in, you can go and get some help on it because those resources are always up to date. Just sharing now that OneNote class notebook help page for you. So you can go there if you wish to go there. The other area that I said I would give for you today is a code. Now, if you are logged into the Microsoft Education Center, instead of it saying sign in in the top right hand corner, it will now have your initials either from the account you've created uh, or the one you were using previously. If you scroll down, once you press your initials, you'll see a box called redeem code. You click it and a little window pops up 
and then in that window you can add in the code and then that will give you 1000 points and it will give you credits for having undertaken the microsoft OneNote class notebook courses so i'll just leave that there on screen while well, any questions that you've got for me and i will go and fetch a copy of that and post it into the conversation so you can pick it up if you're watching this video afterwards you are more than welcome to still redeem the code i will leave the code valid and open so that it's something that you can pick up and still redeem uh, and it will then credit you for how you want to use it are there any questions while well, that's all happening anything anybody wants to know about if you've you used one that class notebook in your own school and you're getting success with it please do share uh, more than happy and always welcome hearing what other people are up to the code to redeem in the Microsoft Education Center is there. I will also go get the links to the Microsoft Education Center for you uh, and make sure that that's there for you. Microsoft Education Center link coming up next. There we go. One of the other things we'd love you to do today is please, if you've enjoyed the session or if you think anything would be really useful, could you add in your feedback? Tiana from our marketing team is also adding in some information about the next uh, session. Tiana, if you are listening to this, could you also add in the link to the evaluation form so that everybody can do that? It's really quick. There's a few stars and a, a text comment if you wish, but you don't have to. Anything you think you'd like to see in future sessions, because we can react to that and make sure that you've got it included uh, and that you've got what you need moving forwards. So really, that concludes today's session. It's been great to have you all along and talk to you about OneNote Class Notebook and what it may be able to do for you. If you're going to go away and start to use it for the first time, start simple. Just try changing colors of backgrounds or maybe inking onto the page if you've got it up on an interactive whiteboard. If you don't, try adding some text boxes and maybe a video or an animation and just build up your repertoire from there. Get into maybe bringing your students in and sharing some pages if it works for you, if you've got access to the devices. If that's not how you're going to work and you're just going to use it for teaching and learning, you may not decide to create student areas. Just tailor it to how you're working and what you've got available around you. And if you think you're actually finding it something that's really beneficial and positive for you, then go and share it with your colleagues and show them what you're up to and see if it will help them too so i want to say a massive thank you today thank you for coming along and participating 